Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning as we, uh, you may notice we're in a different place each week uh, that we've been, that I've been working with the live stream. I've been trying to uh, try something new, uh, try to make it so that the eventual goal is that we would be able to broadcast worship from inside the church and be able to, uh, to be able to, so that you all would feel more comfortable watching at home instead of watching from the li uh, library. I, I hope that this is a pleasant surprise um, and that the sound is coming through uh, nice and clear for you all. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, it's uh, certainly a lot nicer than the library. Uh, it, uh, it's nice to be in here and to be able to gather together at our altar, to be able to uh, light candles, and to be able to hear God's word in this holy and beautiful place. Uh, so I, I, hope that, uh, I hope this is a change of events for us, a little, a little bit of joy uh, in our morning. As we uh, gather this morning, let us pause. Let us give thanks to God and place our hearts and minds uh, in, in the very presence of God who is here and among us, who's gathering us together across the internet and gathering us together to hear the word this morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, in whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
Your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 116, the response, I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. I will call on the name of the Lord. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. I will call on the name of the Lord. A reading from 1 Peter, the first chapter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages. For you, for your sake, through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, 
love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our hearts burn within us while you open to us the scripture. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we were talking, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel 
of the Lord. Good morning. Peace be with you. As I was reflecting on this morning's readings, I was reminded of a time in my life when things turned out to be disappointing. It was probably a few weeks after September 11th, and I had uh, was stationed at Elmendorf Air Force Base in Alaska. And our squadron commander came out and said, you know, told us about how life was going to be put on delay for a little while. That it was going to be a long time before things kind of got back to normal, if they ever did, whatever the new normal was going to be. And as he talked, I felt this kind of weight in my heart of things of, you know, of uncertainty and what things were headed towards, and certainly a sense of disappointment. To the big stuff, I didn't know when I would be able to be on leave and go visit my family again. It would be shortly, uh, it would take a little while before that would happen. We didn't know if we were going to deploy and if other life was going to have to be put on hold. Unimportantly, at the time, I was taking uh, ballroom dance lessons and uh, thought that was just going to be the most fun to do in my work schedule. My new work schedule after that event in our life together uh, was going to prevent me from completing those lessons. I never did. Uh, I'm not a ballroom dancer, and uh, honestly, it's probably better for um, a vast majority of the population that I don't dance. That sense of disappointment is something that I think permeates our lives these days. The stories of graduates who are not going to have a graduation ceremony, the plans that we had set forth to go on vacation or have weddings, the plans that we may have had to move on to something new and exciting, to see the next place where God is calling us to do and to be, are put on hold. And that's disappointing. What feels oftentimes like there may not be an end in sight, it's easy in that to lose perspective, to lose focus on the things that are important. The disciples in this morning's gospel have that same palpable disappointment. As this stranger approaches them on the road and they are telling their experience, their stories of Jesus of Nazareth, this one whom they had hoped was going to be the one to redeem Israel. Imagine to live your whole life to follow Jesus, to surrender all things to Christ, and to find 
yourself at the end of this on a walk away from Jerusalem, on a walk away from God's holy city. And even though you want to believe the story, you can feel in those words, we had hope. We had hoped that things were going to be further along than they are at this point. We had hoped that we would have gathered in worship by now. We had hoped to be on our way to another place. We had hoped. The thing is, in all of our expectations, in all of our we had hoped and disappointments in life, there is one for whom we can trust in and know that we will not be disappointed. That one who draws close to us, the one who is Jesus, the one in whom we can trust and entrust our whole lives to, to trust in the promises of God, these promises made real for us. These promises that were made real as Jesus hung upon the cross and died. Those promises that were fully realized in the new promised resurrection on Easter morning. These promises. is the place where we place all our hope on. During this time that we are apart, it is my hope that we will, that we are spending time discovering those promises, reading those promises in the sacred scriptures. It is the place that God encounters us in God's word. reading the Bible, even when it's confusing and not fully understood or when we gain lots of questions, I encourage you to write those questions down and then when we're back together again, let's have a Bible study and answer them and ponder them together. God's word becomes real for us in those, that promised Christ when we sit and spend time within it and we read the Gospels and we question and we think and we ponder, what, Lord, might you be saying to me today? Later in Luke's Gospel, we will see that Jesus says that it was necessary for all things to be fulfilled. All that was written in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. That this Lord who is going to remain with us, this Lord who is always drawing near to us, is found in these holy words. In this book of God's word, this collection of stories of God's people. And how no matter what happened, God always remained with them, stayed close to them, and they and never disappointed. that God is faithful to God's promises. All things that we do in the life of the church are founded in God's word. They're grounded in this scripture. 
that contains all the things that we need for our salvation, all the things which are necessary to know about God are here. When we think about the holy sacraments of baptism and communion, which we're longing for and missing during this time. And I hope that in this time of communion fasting, we are hungering and we're building that hunger for the Lord's table. But those things are nothing apart from God's word. God's word speaks to the water and the word and the water makes it a sacrament. The sacrament of baptism is a visible word of God. When we gather at the table, it is not me who makes bread and wine, but it is God's word that makes bread and wine the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Visible words. Visible words when we declare the forgiveness of sin. Your sins are forgiven. Visible words when we call up a friend and when we encourage them during a difficult time, when we are just checking in, when we're saying, hi, how are you doing? What'd you watch on TV last night? when we're comforting one another and consoling one another through grief. And ultimately, God's own word made visible for us in Jesus Christ. A word that is now spoken through proclamation of the one who is risen from the dead, the one in whom we can look to and say, yes, there is God, there is God for us. The one in whom we can read and ingest and make and let it transform our lives. It was a, the saint, St. Jerome, who said, when you must rest at the end of the night, when your eyes grow heavy, let your head rest on God's word. People of God, God's word is written for your sake. And in it, we see the God who reveals Jesus Christ to us as the promised one who will not disappoint, who will not fail us, the one in whom we can place all of our trust, our faith, our hopes, and our dreams, knowing that God has all things in hand, knowing that we need not worry for the God of the universe who becomes incarnate, who takes on flesh in Jesus Christ, goes before us. He is the one who loves you. And he will not fail you. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Responding, hear our prayer to the words, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you have given to your church your word to sustain it, to hold it together, to comfort it in times of sorrow, to raise us up in our disappointments, to know that you are ever present. Empower your church to hear it, to respond to it, and to use it for the benefit of all of your people. Lord, in your mercy, creating God, you have made the world and all that is in it, and we give you thanks for your creation. We pray for those who care for it. We ask that you continue to bless it, that the land may be nourished and your people may be fed from it. Lord, in your mercy. Leading God, we entrust to you all of the leaders of this world, of our nation, of our state and of our local governments. All of those are called to care for your people and to make decisions that affect them. Enlighten them with your Holy Spirit that they might have the wisdom, the compassion, the understanding to do your will for the benefit of all your people. Lord, in your mercy, We pray today, healing God, for all who are sick. We pray for all who are home today. We pray for those who are in hospitals, recovering from surgeries. And especially, Lord, we ask you to heal this world of the virus to gather us together once again. We ask for your presence to be with those and the strength for those who care for others, for doctors, nurses, hospital workers. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray today and remember before you those who have died. We ask today for your comfort during mourning, for those of us who have lost others, that your word will always be a reminder of your ongoing presence. Lord, in your mercy, Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. As a reminder, during this time, we would normally take up the offering. 
the work of the church is still continuing in the sense of the lights need to be on, the cable bill to provide the internet needs to be paid. Uh, and so I encourage you all to donate online. That's the best way to do it uh, so that we can, the payments then get immediately deposited into our bank account. For those of you who continue to support the church during this time, I give thanks for you. Uh, thank you for your generosity uh, to keep things moving along. And thank you for all of you who um, are going to continue to donate. Let us give thanks for the word among us. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements as we conclude this morning. Uh, I have provided a new list uh, for readings to be able to, if you'd like to spend some time in the scriptures. They're based on what's called the Revised Common Lectionary. That's the where we get our readings from each Sunday. Uh, the readings leading up to uh, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, lead to the reading on Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, reflect back on the reading for Sunday, and then the cycle repeats itself. You can find that on the Lakes Lutheran webpage. Um, I've also posted a link to it on the Facebook page so that you can find it there. Uh, so hopefully that'll help you during this time. I post the readings for the following week uh, every Wednesday uh, so you can be able to spend some time in the scripture. If you're not sure where to start, uh, you could start with John's Gospel, start with the Gospels, good place as any. Um, during this time uh, that we're apart, it, it, it really is an important thing to spend some time in the Word. Uh, as we uh, continue, the church council is working on a plan for reopening the church. Of course, it's based entirely on uh, the governor and the health department's direction. Um, and so continue to keep them in your prayer and let us pray that we will be together um, soon enough. I give thanks for all of you as you continue to gather and to meet here online. Um, I pray for you each day, um, and I hope that you are well um, and very much look forward to seeing you again soon. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Christ is with you.